Well, um, it is important that um, children uh, spend time in nature, and it's, it's definitely a problem that children are not spending as much time in nature as they used to. Um, you know, anecdotally, when I do presentations um, and I ask adult audiences to think about a memory from their childhoods, and then I ask them if that memory had something to do with the outdoors, 90% of the hands will be raised. And then I let them know that if I were to ask that same question maybe 30 years from now, to an audience of what are today's children, far, far fewer hands would be raised. And um, it's, it's often it's sort of astonishing to them to think about the fact that this may be the first, we might even be a little bit into the second generation of children who are far more connected to their electronic devices and far more likely to spend time indoors than they are to be outdoors and connected to nature. And this is important because without that connection, then kids don't develop concern for the earth. Uh, they, if they don't have concern for the earth, they won't end up trying to protect it. Um, the health of the planet is basically at stake. But so is the health of our population, and that's some of the research that I, I just want to review quickly. So, so why is this so important, and why might we be having um, you know, some issues related to both um, the planet and to human health? So there are some trends in how kids are spending their time. Um, there are also some trends related to health and wellness, and there's some evidence that those two things are connected. So there's been a decrease over time in the last two generations or so in the amount of time that children are spending outdoors. The uh, Kaiser Family Foundation uh, reported that kids are spending 40 to 65 hours a week elected, uh, connected to electronic media. That that's a full-time job. You know, that's, that's amazing. Um, there's also evidence that there's been a decrease in what we call the roaming range, so the distance that kids are allowed to venture on their own away from home. And that used to be measured in, like, a mile, and now it's measured in feet. Um, and that tells you something about why things, you know, the, the fact that a lot of things have been putting pressure on, on parents and schools and, and, you know, other institutions um, around safety and litigation and things like that. And our kids are just far more likely to um, spend time indoors, not be allowed to spend free time outdoors. So what's been the impact of this? Um, or what, you know, why is this a problem or why are we concerned about it? You know, childhood obesity and severe overweight in children and youth has increased from like 4% in the 60s to like 20% today. And it's substantially higher in some communities. That's um, from the Centers for Disease Control. There's also been a dramatic increase in conditions that are showing up in childhood that only used to show up in adulthood. So things like high blood pressure and diabetes, we're starting to see in kids. That's very bad news since those kids will continue to have those illnesses or conditions throughout their life in potential ways that could shorten their lives. And then we're also seeing things like increases in myopia or nearsightedness, um, as well as things like vitamin D deficiency. So, Children also had less time in unstructured creative play in the outdoors than ever before in human history. And all of these things combined has led the Surgeon General and others to say that this may be the first generation of children that don't live as long as their parents. You know, we always want our kids to do better and um, to live longer than us, and this may be the first generation that's not going to do that. So while all these trends and conditions um, are complex, they're multi-determined, that disconnection from nature um, and less time spent outdoors is certainly one factor that plays a role in all of those conditions and sort of links all of them together. Nature has benefits in a variety of areas, one being health benefits. So physical activity and obesity prevention um, are so Certainly areas that um, particularly free play in nature can help um, with kids are, are more active when they are outside playing in a free play sort, sort of situation than they are when they're indoors. Physical development and motor development, um, when children are outside you know, climbing and roaming around on uneven terrain and things like that, they're exercising um, motor skills and, and learning those skills when they're, you know, playing with individual uh, small pieces like you know, pine cones or, or you know, building with little sticks or something like that, they're learning fine motor skills. Um, there's also this emerging evidence that um, 
Myopia, that nearsightedness, um, can be uh, prevented with lots of outdoor um, exposure, and there's a couple of theories re behind that. Some of it has to do with the focus distance being much greater, like looking at the horizon, for example, when you're outdoors versus you know looking at a screen that's right in front of you when you're indoors. But there's also new evidence that suggests that that bright sunlight actually has something to do with the development of the eye, um, and that that's critical for the proper uh, development of, um, of eyesight. Then mental health and mental well-being, emotional well-being is another area that there's some research around. Um, emotional development, how we learn to manage our emotions, is an area that um, some researchers have found a connection uh, with, with exposure to nature. Um, increased self-esteem and confidence, um, improved sense of focus um, and attention. Um, there's a theory called attention restoration theory that's all about what nature can do for your sort of undirected or involuntary attention systems that allow your directed or effortful attention to sort of take a break and, and sort of have some respite so that when you come back to an effortful task, you feel sort of restored and able to take that on. And there's evidence that, that nature mediates stress um, and improves our mood, um, improves our anxiety levels, you know, kind of takes an edge off of our emotional state. And then there's this whole area around sort of learning and education, um, nature-based learning, um, you know, kind of doing uh, academic learning outdoors um, across the subject areas has been shown to, to, to demonstrate improved skills or knowledge in those areas. Also, academic skills just like reading and math and language skills, for example, test performance and achievement, uh, graduation rates, um, decreased discipline and classroom management issues um, because behavior is just more regulated when children have enough outdoor time. Um, and then increased engagement with learning and enthusiasm for school, greater pride in accomplishments. So those are some of the areas that have to do with uh, education and learning. And then there's a big category of broadly speaking, developmental outcomes. And these might be things having to do with cognitive development, the development of executive functions like impulse control, planning, foresight, problem solving, planning, things like that. Um, again, free play is an important piece of that because the child is really you know, exercising their own control or working with others to regulate themselves rather than an adult coming and, and telling them you know, what to do. Um, that idea of working together, um, uh, in, in playing together, building something together, problem solving, uh, learning to share things, etc. All part of social development, collaboration, cooperation. Um, as kids get older, they actually um, learn some leadership skills um, as well as following skills when they're engaged in those sort of social interactions. And then there's an area that we call personal development that has to do with things like, you know, a sense of identity, self-knowledge, aspirations, what's important to you, what are your values, things like that. And then there's this big area that's really, really important to it, um, environmental education, and that has to do with this idea of building a conservation ethic. And so developing that sense of awe or wonder, that connectedness to a place, um, all contribute to that, that ethical development and that sense of, I know nature, I love nature, and I want to protect it. And they begin doing more, um, t taking action and doing behaviors that are, are conservation behaviors. So environmental education is one really important avenue across the age span from early childhood through uh, adulthood and older age uh, that provides quality experiences in nature. And while traditionally environmental education's aim has been focused um, on that benefit to the environment, I think environmental education can address health of the planet while simultaneously addressing these physical and mental health, learning and educational, uh, success and developmental outcomes like social emotional learning, identity development, executive function, all those things that we just talked about. So it's important for the field of environmental education to understand how EE can use nature to achieve all of these various outcomes while addressing that traditional aim around uh, improvement or preservation of the environment. So for example, you know, building in physical activity and free movement movement time into environmental education uh, will help achieve the health benefits. Um, allowing time for some quiet observation and reflection might contribute to the mental health benefits and restore attention functioning through that attention restoration theory. 
um, using nature as the context or the backdrop for meaningful hands-on learning across subject areas or topical areas and doing that in collaborative groups um, of kids will help achieve those learning and educational benefits as well as those social development benefits. So with some intentional planning and perhaps some tweaks um, to how and where environmental education is delivered, I think EE has the potential for a multi-pronged impact on both humans and on the health of the planet and the environment.